Howdy, howdy, Chris here, and welcome to Garage Noise, the channel that's dedicated to helping you with your repair or restoration project, teaching you everything you need to know about repairing and painting your vehicle. Today, we're talking about painting your project, a base coat, clear coat finish, and I'm going to share with you some different techniques and tips on how you can produce a beautiful looking finish and create less overspray and use less materials. We'll also talk about how to apply clear coat so you can get a beautiful looking finish. So let's dig in and get started. Okay, so what we're using today is the Iwata Kwame 4. The Iwata Kwame 4 uses about 10 to 13 CFMs of air. You know, that's pretty typical for most spray guns, your Devilbus, your Sadas, uh, all the high-end paint guns use about the same air pressure or consume about the same amount of air pressure. So in order to adjust this gun and lay down a beautiful finish using less air, having less overspray and using less materials, we need to adjust our gun settings and our techniques a little bit. So when you adjust your gun settings, we're going to knock down the volume of the gun. We don't want to put out so much volume that we're gonna create orange peel. Because remember, we're using less air pressure. So if we adjust our fluid volume, we need to adjust our air pressure accordingly. So the first thing to do is to adjust that fluid volume. We're gonna start out with one and three quarters turn out. So we're gonna close it all the way. We're gonna turn one full turn, and then we're gonna go three quarters of a turn. This is gonna give us a, enough volume to produce a nice flat base coat. Now, as far as the fan pattern, I've got this wide open and then I dialed it back a quarter turn just to narrow it just a little bit. Now, the air pressure we're going to set this at is 15 PSI. So right around 15 PSI is where you want to be. You can and you can adjust any of these, but I'm just showing you how to set up your gun to spray with less air and still have a good looking finish. And it's really gonna make a difference when it comes down to your clear coat because nobody wants a bunch of overspray in their garage from clear coat. But you can still get a good finish by dialing down your fluid volume and then dialing down your air pressure according to your fluid volume because they work together. Remember, this gun is like a puzzle. The four things that work together are the air pressure, the fluid volume, your speed and your distance all to produce that finish that you're spraying. We're gonna spray with about 14 PSI, okay? I'm gonna put another coat of base on this. We put one on. I'm sorry, the audio got messed up, so I had to, I had to change my mic, but we're gonna spray another coat of base on this. We're gonna put our second coat on. I'm gonna spray a little bit closer. So rather than spraying eight to 10 inches away, I'm gonna move that down between four and six inches away. Somewhere in that range, you're gonna to have to adjust to what's comfortable for you and what produces the finish that you're looking for. I'm gonna speed up just a little bit. I'm not gonna be going really slow. So I'm spraying closer to the panel. I'm putting more material on the panel. Because I have less air pressure, I wanna be a little bit closer to that panel. All of these settings you can adjust for what's comfortable for you and what's gonna give you the best finish. So you need to play around with it a little bit. I'm just giving you a guideline to use less air. When applying your base coat, it's important that you overlap your passes 75 to 80%. This is gonna give you good uniform coverage. And it's very important if you're spraying a high metallic finish because this is gonna help eliminate modeling, which is an inconsistency in the appearance of those metallics. Here I'm just blending out into this door and I'm blending the color out into the fender so we get a nice transition. Now, it's not that critical on black, but if you're spraying a high metallic finish like a gold or a sil silver, there's a lot of techniques you can use to get a good metallic blend. And I've got other videos on that topic if you check them out on my YouTube channel. We're gonna put another coat of base on here. Well, let's tack this off real quick. Now this is totally dry. We want to make sure look how smooth this is though and we didn't have to use a lot of air pressure and you can adjust how much overspray you have and how much air pressure you're using by lowering your fluid volume and your air pressure accordingly
Now we're gonna be ready for some clear coat. Look how smooth that is, nice and smooth. We've got a little spot here I need to cover up with a couple more coats, and then we're gonna lay some clear coat down. Another great option for minimizing your overspray and saving in materials is to use a low volume, low pressure paint gun. Now this is the AeroPro A610. This one only consumes about 3.5 to 3.9 CFMs of air, so it can be used with a small compressor, but it also saves you a bunch on materials and it'll keep that garage from filling up with overspray. With this gun, I set my air pressure at 30 PSI and two and a half turns out from closed on my fluid volume. My fan pattern is wide open. Most of the time I'm using a low volume, low pressure paint gun because I'm spraying in an open garage. I wanna limit the amount of overspray and I wanna save in materials and I really do like how much money this saves me in clear coat and paint. Now, if you want even less overspray, you can adjust this gun down the way we talked about with the base coat, adjust your fluid volume and adjust your air pressure accordingly. And you can get a beautiful looking finish by using less air pressure and less fluid. To get the best results when applying your clear coat, overlap your passes 75 to 80%. So when you make a pass, when you come back, you wanna overlap that previous pass by 75 or 80%. Remember your speed and distance. You wanna have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from that panel at all times. As I'm laying down the clear coat, I'm constantly evaluating how that clear's laying on the panel. If I'm getting a little bit too much orange peel, I may speed up just a little bit and that's gonna to help to smooth that out. I may even have to back away from the panel a little bit to let that clear coat atomize a little better and lay flatter on the panel. Once you have your gun set up, most of the time it just takes a few little minor tweaks in your speed and your distance to get that finish that you're looking for. I just want you guys to understand and experiment with how your speed and your distance are gonna affect that clear coat finish. Looking at my first coat of clear, I'm really happy with the finish. Now, I wasn't trying to make it perfect on my first coat. I just want to introduce that clear to the surface so we can go back and slick it out on the second coat. But as you can see, the garage isn't filled with overspray, so we've minimized our overspray with our gun adjustments and this low volume, low pressure paint gun. So it's Monday morning, we painted this truck Saturday. I just wanted to give you an idea of the finish. No dieback on the U-Pole clear, so that looks good. It's got some, you know, some particles of dust. It's not perfect. It's got a little bit of texture in it. Nothing more than factory, but I am gonna cut and buff some of this dust out, a little piece of lint there. Overall, this repair came out beautifully. I'm not happy with the amount of dust that's in it, but we're gonna cut and buff this. We'll unbag this, get it outside and take a look at it. I hope you found this information helpful for restoring or repairing your project. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you part of our community. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you watching and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.